Well, good evening. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It is July 5th, 2024, and we have been talking for many days about Hurricane Beryl. Beryl has set a lot of records uh, this season so far, the second storm, named storm of the season, but already has reached Category 5 status. Now is over the Yucatan Peninsula here with the 5 p.m. update. And you can see from the satellite picture, Beryl has not really decreased in its symmetry, uh, although winds are now down to 65 miles per hour over land. Uh, this particular storm uh, is going to regroup and will re-strengthen and is now headed for the Texas coast. That's why we're doing this video update because Beryl is now a couple of days away from landfall impacting the mainland uh, United States and we'll be bringing you updates uh, throughout the course of its life now as it does threaten critical infrastructure. Uh, let me show you a little bit closer and widescreen what it looks like uh, from the standpoint of uh, full screen here. And you can see a uh, barrel. This is the circulation of the tropical storm. Winds, again, down to 65 miles per hour. Uh, but barrel is going to be taking a track uh, towards the southern Texas coast and then start to recurve. Uh, this is important because the sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico are very warm, as they are in the tropical Atlantic and the Caribbean. Uh, so... Conditions will exist for Beryl to undergo potentially some rapid strengthening starting on the day Sunday prior to landfall on the Texas coast on Monday. Now, we do have a little closer view I wanted to show you. This is the uh, mesoscale view from the GOES satellite, 22,300 miles up. This is GOES East, uh, and you can see images are coming in every minute of this storm and this is an impressive circulation. The center is right around here, right along the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, about to emerge over the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, we do expect Beryl to start increasing in intensity. It won't happen immediately, uh, but over the next 24 to 36 hours, uh, Beryl is likely to regain hurricane status uh, by tomorrow evening around this time. We'll certainly keep you posted on the strength. I know what everybody wants to know about is also uh, what it looks like from the standpoint of GeoCollaborate. So this is what it looks like. Beryl has a long history uh, already. This is more like a September, October, uh, November hurricane uh, coming off the Cape Verde Islands. Uh, and you can see where this uh, came all the way uh, through the uh, Leeward Islands into the Caribbean, where it gained Category 5 status with winds of 165 miles per hour, uh, impacted Jamaica and also the Cayman Islands, and now it's impacting the uh, Yucatan Peninsula. So where will it go from there? Let's take a little bit closer look in here. Uh, this is the latest position right along the coastline at 5 p.m. Eastern Time on July 5th. This is the latest official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. And you can see that it does, it has been trending further to the north uh, with an impact around the southern to south central Texas coast. Keep in mind, uh, as this storm starts to make its curve, and it's not set in stone exactly where this could uh, curve could happen, uh, it is going to slow down in its movement, uh, which is not good when you're considering critical infrastructure and uh, flooding. Uh, there could be extensive flooding in southeast Texas once again, uh, and there are uh, lots of eyes from the National Weather Service on this potential flood maker. Now, for the for the time being, hurricane watches have been issued. There's a hurricane watch now in effect for the Texas coast from the mouth of the Rio Grande here in southern Texas uh, northward to Sargent. And Sargent is in Matagorda County. Uh, so you can see it offshore as well here. This is a hurricane watch. Uh, there are also storm surge watches now in effect on the Texas coast from the mouth of the Rio Grande northward to Sargent. So this storm has a fairly decent sized circulation. As it gets closer to the Texas coast, the shelf along the Texas coast you can see is uh, very shallow. You can see this right here. This is where it gets very deep. 
Uh, so water is going to build up well ahead of this storm for potential uh, surge flooding. And uh, that is going to likely be expanded as the track gets a little bit more definitive as time goes on. But you can see it remains forecast to remain a tropical storm in this part of the Gulf of Mexico and then to become a hurricane uh, on the day uh, during the day Sunday. So this is Friday. We're talking about two days. But this period in here, if it curves a little bit north further, uh, it will have more time over the Gulf of Mexico, the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, and could strengthen more. So uh, we're not ruling out the possibility uh, that barrel could make landfall as a Category 2 or 3 hurricane. The National Hurricane Center is watching this very closely. All of these other advisories that you see uh, along the Texas coast and along uh, Louisiana, this is all heat related. You can click on this one here. This is a heat advisory for the excessive heat conditions that have been existing for so many days along the southeast part of the United States. So once again, uh, Barrel is uh, headed towards the Texas coast. Uh, it is looking like it will uh, be an impactful storm. Uh, we will certainly keep you updated on all of the uh, situation as Beryl uh, becomes from a tropical storm to a hurricane. Uh, we'll keep you posted. The next update here will be uh, tomorrow morning uh, as we monitor Beryl and its uh, pathway towards the Texas coast. Uh, this will have impacts uh, to critical infrastructure, uh, flooding, storm surge flooding, hurricane force winds impacting uh, power and utility lines, uh, also communications perhaps. Uh, we'll narrow that down. Currently, we have no reports of mutual assistance requests for fleet utility vehicles uh, to make their way towards Texas. That could change as well. Uh, so for now, this has been an update for the All Hazards Consortium, the sensitive information sharing environment, which is part of the Fleet Response Working Group, all to help states manage their communications with private sector organizations in those states and also to manage the movement of fleet utility vehicles. I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and we'll talk to you again tomorrow morning.